hello everyone and welcome to the channel today I just thought I would do something just fun just because I have my Crayola 120 crayon set just your typical cheap 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 crayons got my little green guy here that they give you as a pencil sharpener I've got that and then I've got Timeless Creations Magical Garden Coloring Book. This was this is actually um, a crazy art um, brand, uh, the Timeless Creations. So we have Crazy Art and we have Crayola. How budget friendly can that be? So, you know, I just thought, hey, have some fun and see what we can make. See if we can make some magic in the magical garden. The uh, coloring book was on clearance at Walmart for uh, $3. And I thought, hey, why not? So, I just thought we would have some fun and, you know, see what we can do. All the talk recently about... Um, different types of budget-friendly product and what could be done with them and what shouldn't be done with them or what have you and I just thought hey I'm gonna practice what I preach and I am gonna use some budget-friendly stuff I mean some really budget-friendly stuff I do prefer um, Crayola when it comes to my crayons because I have tried um, the other brands and the brands that are a little cheaper than Crayola, you know, you can get your Crazy Arts and your Rose Arts and, you know, all kinds of different arts, uh, crayons, but what I've noticed about those is they are even waxier than the Crayola. And they don't, they don't put color down as, as well. So, I'm not a big fan of that. I tried, you know, I've always been about saving a buck, getting a sale. I mean, that's, that's always been me. When my kids were small, they, you know, would need crayons or want crayons or whatever. And I tried all those different brands, and I came to the conclusion a long time ago that Crayola is by far the best bang um, for your buck when it comes to just regular old crayons. And they're very, they're not very expensive either. So, you know, it's not like you're breaking the bank um, to get the Crayola compared to the other. You're going to save a buck or two. But you're not going to get as much use out of the other crayons. At least, I have not in the past. So, that's been my experience. But I just thought we would play around a little bit and see what we can do. And... I thought I might cheat a little. I do have my Copic, empty Copic, that is filled with just odorless mineral spirits. And odorless mineral spirits will also work on crayons, just like it works on other things. And it breaks up the, um, it breaks up the wax and spreads the pigments around. So if you put a light layer of like crayon down and then you just kind of go over it like this with the odorless mineral spirits, it kind of blends that out, breaks the wax up and um, distributes it across the page a little better. So it makes it a lot easier to like blend in, you know, when you use crayons. So if you use this technique, you can use crayons for your backgrounds and things like that. Just like you could use your soft pastels or pencils, you know, or anything, gelatos. So we'll let that dry for a second and I'll show you um, kind of how that spread that around. And you just need to make sure 
when you finish using something like this that you always just kind of make sure all the um, pigments off before you move on to something else. And I'm not spending a lot of time trying to decide on what kind of colors necessarily. Um, I just wanted to kind of see, you know, what I could create um, using these crayons. There's 120 to choose from, so it's not like, I mean, I have an overabundance here, and that makes it really hard for me always to decide what I want to do. I'm looking for two greens that I really like. Let's see. Yeah, maybe... Maybe, baby. Hmm. Not sure which one of these two I really want to go with. I'm so sorry, guys. I guess we'll start with these two and we'll see where it takes us. You guys want to come in a little more? And I just, you know, when I use crayons, I just color extremely light. Um, if you push down, you'll get so much wax. So, I try to be cautious with that. But I've been coloring with crayons since I was a little girl. Um, my kids loved to color, and I would sit down with them and color pages. Um especially like with Brooke because you know girls a lot of times do tend to be a little more in to coloring than boys. My boys really liked video games and um, playing with action figures and things like that more than art. Michael was a little more artistic um, than Jordan but even Michael uh, didn't really sit down and color a lot. Brooke, on the other hand, had a couple bookshelves that had all kinds of different books. Um, and a lot of those were just coloring books. yeah I just thought this would be kind of fun and I know I've been saying that it doesn't matter which color with and I just wanted to practice that idea because I mean I do I feel that as long as you're having fun and creating that what you're coloring on or what you're coloring with um, is just not a big deal I used to sit for hours with my crayons when I was was young. Um, one of the things I really loved about Christmas morning was my mom would always um, make sure that Santa left me new coloring crayons and coloring books. And that was always one of my favorite things to get out of my stocking on Christmas morning. And I know we're in January now, so talking about Christmas is a little odd. And if you are new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. We do color with things other than crayons, but... Um, there had been, it had been brought to my attention that there had been some people who maybe felt that their supplies um, didn't compare to other people's and they were kind of afraid to share their work or, you know, whatnot. 
and um, I saw specifically crayons were asked about over on Nisi's channel, Dollar Diva, um, 99's Coloring World, and where someone had proposed the question, is it okay to color with crayons, and is it looked down on? So, I mean, here you go. No. I'm really hoping that whoever asked that question of Nisi is here to see this video. Um, because no, I don't look down on it at all. I think that color is just beautiful and I don't care what you use to get that color. Um, it's just gorgeous. I love to watch pigments go down onto paper. It's a very uh, peaceful feeling for me. The biggest negative I have when it comes to using crayons is when they get dull. Yeah, they provide you with these cute little crayon sharpeners, but the crayon sharpeners don't work very well, to be honest. Um, if it gets to the point that I'm needing to seriously sharpen, because I am going into some pretty tight spots, I may actually try um, pulling out like one of the really cheap, cheap pencil sharpeners and just see what it'll do. I mean, I understand that the wax will catch onto the blade and really be kind of tough to use, but, you know, it'll be okay. You gots to do what you gots to do. And if you kind of rotate your crayon when you're coloring, if you just keep kind of rotating it, um, let me move this just a little. Sorry, guys. But if you just kind of, you know, rotate a little as you color, that helps also to just kind of keep a little more of a point. This feels... I mean, honestly, this almost kind of feels like coming home. You know, when you grow up and you move away and, um, you know, you're gone from your town for years. And then you come home for a visit. And when you, you know, as soon as you come into the town limits, it's almost like the air's cleaner and crisper and fresher. And it's just everything feels right about that. To me, when I sit down with crayons, <laughs> call me crazy, but that's kind of how it feels because this is where I started so, so many years ago with my books and sitting down and coloring. Um, my mother would color with me a lot. And, um, so, you know, this was kind of all I knew. Um, I did have some markers, but I never liked how, I never liked how streaky the markers looked, and that was long before I even thought about trying a permanent marker for coloring. Um, you know, so I did have some, like, Crayola water markers and things like that, but they ran out quickly, and they were kind of streaky, and they kind of peeled at the paper, and, you know, I had no idea what was happening, or you know how to combat that at all at that age so I just kind of always used my pencils or not pencils but crayons and I was never good with pencils I did have colored pencils and they always stressed me out when I was little <laughs> so I want to learn to use my colored pencils more and that's going to be an experience because I really have nothing to pull off of, uh, you know, like mentally from that because I did not like them as a child. So I never spent time trying to, um, you know, color with them, not to mention to master them. There was just no way.
This is a really cute little book too. I was looking at a lot of the images in the book and I mean I think that I will color you know several of these images. There's one in particular that I really want to use my markers on for sure. You know sometimes when you look at an image I mean have you ever opened up a coloring book and looked at an image and thought I want to color that and not only did you think I want to color that but you could kind of see it and how pretty it could be. And that was kind of how I felt about the one page. So. And this is a new box of crayons. I have a box that has a lot of crayons in it. But they're all kind of broken and you know they're old they're old um, so these are new I had thought about the conversations that we had had about using different mediums and I was like you know I really want to pull my crayons out and I really want to do something with crayons and I looked at my crayons and, you know they're they're worn and they've got the um, paper has worn off so you can't see names or any of that kind of stuff so I mean yeah I admit crayons have their drawbacks okay but it doesn't mean that they don't work um, mine just definitely needed replaced so I did that and got this set it's 120 it was like six dollars um, and the book was three dollars so for nine dollars that should give me a lot of enjoyable coloring I hope and you know if any of the nieces or the nephews or any of those come over the little ones you know and if they want to color I can always just hand them this box of crayons and say, go have fun. I'm going to zoom that out just a little. Okay. I'm pretty sure I'll kind of just kind of brush the odorless mineral spirits over these just a little bit to kind of get rid of any of the white that's it will it'll get rid of a lot of the white that shows through with crayons um, and you may have heard the odorless mineral spirits referred to as maybe gamsol because that is a brand name that people use and it's it's gamsol itself is normally um targeted towards the art community but basically what Gamsol is is it is odorless mineral spirits and odorless mineral spirits is also known as like paint thinner is what it's actually known as so if you use it and you have you know asthma or anything like that make sure you're doing that in a well ventilated area um, don't do it around open flame. It is very flammable. Once it's dry, it's okay, but the fumes off of it are flammable. Um, keep it away from small children. Um, don't have it out where your animals may get into it. And I mean, I don't think an animal would just walk up and knowingly um, drink it or anything like that. It doesn't smell. Um, it says odorless, but it's not odorless. It does have an odor, but it's not an odor that I would think an animal would be drawn to drink from. But, you know, just to be on the safe side, I know there's a lot of people who don't like to use anything that could be toxic, and I get that. I understand. And so, you know, odorless mineral spirits may not be for you, but you can get them at most um, most all like hardware stores or anything in Walmart they have a brand over in the art section I'm not sure what that brand name was it's not Gamsol um, 
and it's like five, almost five dollars, four ninety eight for a six. It's either an eight or a sixteen ounce. I can't remember. But if you go back to the um, hardware where the paints and things are, you can get it back there in a 32 ounce container for just under $5. And 32 ounces of this will last you forever. It does not take much at all to achieve um, results with any of your art supplies using the odorless mental spirits um i do like putting it in like the empty copic marker that works well for me um any you know like empty marker but i mean you can use it with just like a cotton swab you know like a q-tip or you could use it with um blending stumps or you know anything like that so there's lots of different ways to apply it. I really do like the empty Copic because I have the brush and I have the chisel. So I can do it either way. And it's very convenient because I only have to refill the marker every so often instead of you have to constantly dip um, if you're using the, um, like the blending stumps. You're constantly having to dip down inside of that so, and you've also got like open enrollment, open um, mental spirits on your desk or whatever. So, it really cuts down on any odor or any spillage or anything like that using it in the empty marker. And the way I feel mine is I just, um, I have like a child medicine um, dropper. It's like one of the syringes for children's medicine. And I just put some of the odorless mineral spirits in the cap. And, it, you know, I take its cap off and just pour a little bit over on its cap. And then I just kind of suck it up inside of that syringe. And then I remove the chisel nib of the marker. And I put the tip of that medicine dropper down inside because it will fit just perfect down in that little hole. And then I very gently push just a little bit of the mineral spirits down into the marker. And then I just pop the chisel back in and go to town. And it's it works for a good little while before it needs to be refilled again. So you get a good bit of use out of it. And that's what I do. I colored a page one day. I had went to... Um, the store and I was going to stop by a restaurant and pick something up that I had kind of been craving and it turned out that the restaurant didn't open for like an hour and 20 minutes and I was like you gotta be kidding me I didn't want to drive back home I wasn't feeling real well at the time to be honest so what I did there was a grocery store right next door and I ran into the grocery store and they had like one of the little small um, magazine type coloring books, one of the little small ones. And I grabbed it and I grabbed a 24 pack of Crayola crayons. And I went and sat in my car and I colored um, a couple pages in that little book. And then when I got home, I pulled out my odorless mineral spirits and blended them out and um, I thought it looked really nice so and I shared that on a couple at least one Facebook group at the time so maybe you never know some of you may have actually remembered seeing that picture um, it was like koi in like a river and yeah, I mean, I just took my Crayola crayons and I went to town. And I think that as long as you don't put Crayola crayons on, you know, or any crayon, as long as you don't do it really hard and get it extremely shiny and waxy, I think it looks great, you know, just like it is. And even if you, and some people may like that, you know, thick waxy look. And if you do, hey, you know, roll with it, um, work it, make it work. But 
after discovering markers and seeing, you know, those flawless, lineless, <laughs> it's just kind of spoilt me. So that's the only reason that I even, um, like, really use the odorless mineral spirits. But I see a leaf I totally missed. sure some of you saw this video and you were like Donna did what <sighs> but it's okay guys don't panic and some of you are probably thinking what have you done have you given up on your alcohol markers forever no I have not I just I don't know the past few days I've just kind of felt like doing something different so I've done um, a lot of work with my gel pens. I've used my Tombows. You know, I was using my pit pens. So I just, I don't know. I felt like doing something a little different. And I've been working with different things. And today, this was kind of like, ugh. But I saw Miss Zoe Archer over on her channel working in Fairy Miracles. And that kind of sparked my interest. So I might be back on markers before the day's over. It's been a, several days since I sat down and looked, even looked at my Clara Markova book, so. I love those books. I might need to sit down and do something in that. We'll see. But this sounded good this morning. There. sure I get all that ickiness off and then once you're odorless uh, once you know if you're using the odorless mineral spirits once it dries um, you can easily go back in with any other um, any other you, know, you can go back in with another crayon or marker or whatever and just, you can continue to add and just build because you broke up that wax. So you're no longer putting like wax on top of wax. But if you take something over it while it's still wet with the odorless mineral spirits, it will just melt away the end of your pencil or your crayon or whatever it is and if you're looking for that smear effect it works but you know just be aware that any point you have it'll eat that point away fairly quickly I'm putting it directly down onto it like that and so see you can just kind of come back and do something like that and if you wanted you could just go right back over that again with the odorless mineral spirits and this time what you're doing is you're blending that second color you're kind of blending it down into that first color so we'll let this dry and we'll kind of see how that looks So it is Sunday. I hope everyone is doing really, really well. And yes, I had to think on the day there. I have the hardest time sometimes picking colors that I want to use together. And 
and I'm just using, you know, when I go in with the odorless mineral spirits, I'm just kind of using the brush ends. This is what I've been using. You can use the chisel end if you want to, like, make it a little more, um, if you want to even blend it out even more, because the brush is only going to do, you know, so much. So if you want to come back and blend it out even more, you can do that, you know, with the chisel end also. I have the Fila pencils on the way. I bought those yesterday. I'm gonna give them a try. I'm excited um, to try different, you know, different pencils and see what may work better for me. Um, you know, with my hands, I've got a sneaky suspicion that I may be a harder lead girl um, because of how heavy-handed I am. I'm having problems when I use my Prismas of getting it extremely, you know, wax bloom really fast. And I think that's from putting way too much pressure down when I'm coloring. Um, you guys can tell me if I'm right with that, you guys that know your pencils well. Um, but I've got a sneaky suspicion that may be what's going on. So I'm thinking I definitely can't do hard, hard, hard leads like Crayola hard. That's just too much for my hands. But I'm thinking that um, maybe some of the, you know, like the Artezas felt okay when I used those. I'm going to work with those a little more, see what my opinion is. I'm going to try the Fila's and you know, the, the ones that I've seen people say are soft, but not too soft. And you never know, I may end up being one of the people that would absolutely love polychromos. And I know that's something crazy to talk about when I'm coloring with Crayola crayons, but I don't know. I've got the 12 polychromo pack, and I need to work with those a little bit, because I would never put that kind of money out. Cause it's hard for me to get them open stock. I have to drive 50 miles to the closest Blick um, if I wanted to order that way. And I'm really afraid to order expensive pencils online. The way I've had some pencils kind of show up makes me a little nervous to try to order pencils online because of the way they package um, a lot of these things that they ship. I don't feel like they're using the proper care um, you know, I brought my Prismas online and I found several Prismas with broken cores. Um, so I'm, I'm not digging the idea of buying really expensive pencils online anymore. So I think I would definitely want to do that, like at Blix or, you know, something like that if I were to go that route. So how many of you knew that you could blend out crayons? You know, if this is, I'm sitting here and telling you guys about this and if it's something that you guys already knew about, I'm so sorry. Um, oh my goodness. I'm having to check my, no. My air or my um, heater says it's working, but um, it's blowing air right now out on me, and it's really cold. <laughs> I mean, it's freezing me sitting here. So I don't know about that. There, it knocked off. Good. Thank goodness. It almost felt like it was an air conditioner, but I checked. I had to check and make sure that was heat coming out. And it said it was, so. You can also heat up the tips with like a hair dryer. 
of crayons and they go down really silky smooth that way. At least the Crayolas do. The waxier they are, the more wax you, you tend to get with that. But you know, there's like a Crayola melter toy now that you can get and that's kind of, I think, the, um, the idea behind that. Yeah, you can just heat them up um, with a hair dryer. That works fairly well. To me, coloring with crayons is just a lot of fun. It's very cold here today. It started back raining yesterday. You know, goodness knows we've had enough rain. It started back raining. It rained a good bit last night. Um, and today it's just turned off really cold. The air's very damp. So it's pretty chilly out there. together a little bit. A alcohol colorless blender works to some degree doing this. Um, I don't think it blends as well as the odorless mineral spirits, but if you want to use something and you're afraid to use the odorless mineral spirits, um, the colorless blenders are options. I'm not sure what's in a water-based colorless blender, like the Tombow blenders and things like that, so I really can't speak to that one because I don't know what's in them, and honestly, I've never tried to blend with one of those. Just beware when you use the alcohol blender. Like on this one, it's it doesn't really, you know, you still don't bleed. You don't get bleed through. But a lot of times, if you use the alcohol um, blender to blend things out, sometimes it will turn the pigment almost as if it were an alcohol marker and it will make it go straight through to the next page, the color. So definitely use a blotter if you're using the, um, with odorless mineral spirits, I've never, so far I haven't experienced it like bleeding through like that. But you know, I say so far anything could happen so with any medium, always, you know, test and, and use caution, but I haven't had any issues. It'll, you know, wet the back of the page and stuff, but once it dries, um, the page behind it goes back to its original color. At least that's been my experience.
Okay. What are you guys thinking so far? Crazy? <laughs> Am I nuts? Well, we all know I'm nuts, but you love me, right? I'm a good kind of nuts. Yeah, like tight little areas like that. It's kind of hard, like these, it's kind of hard to get into with a crayon. And that's like the only complaints that I really have with using crayon. Dum, 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 dum. And see the way the color gets on your, like your nib, but the color doesn't come off anymore once you um, clean off the nib real good. It may stain the nib, but the color does not transfer back off anymore. Someone asked how I did like little half backgrounds that I would do, kind of like a halo of color around my image. I do it just like this, except I would just go around the image with um, my colored pencil, whatever color, and then I would go around just over the pencil with um, this empty Copic with the odorless mineral spirits in it. And I would just go over that, and that's that's all there was to that, you know. That's all I do. Just kind of blends it out. I'm trying to use a lot of different colors of green in here since there's so much um, green that's going to be in the picture. That way, hopefully, it'll all kind of stand out from each other a little bit. I saw that there was a Crayola challenge several months back and I kind of thought about participating even though I was really late to the party. <sighs> but So I kind of thought about just tagging this also as part of the Crayola challenge, but eh. We'll just leave it as the budget friendly challenge. Oh, what color do I want it to be, to be? Hmm. Sorry about this banging all around in your ears, guys. Let's see what happens if I do this. Is this dark enough? Can we see it? It's not showing up very dark. It looked like it would be much darker than that, didn't it? I thought that was going to be a much darker color. Goodness, I might need something darker than this to get it to truly show up. Looks like this light pink is going to go on better than the dark did at the bottom. Yeah, that 
one's a little waxy. This particular pink. It says it's cotton candy, but it feels pretty waxy to me. More so than the the greens I was using did. But I started, so we'll use this one. I could have went back and looked for a darker one, but it'll be okay. This one definitely, these lighter pinks feel very waxy. And some crayons are like that. Some just feel waxier than others. <sighs> I'd be very cautious about rubbing my hand against it <laughs> because of any of the wax that may come flying off and smear. And I see that cotton candy almost doesn't even want to show up when I roll this over it. My concentrating again. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Ooh. It's pretty. What is this called? Unmellow yellow. <laughs> oh, that's cute. This yellow is not mellow. It is pretty bright. It looked like it was going to be more of a mellow yellow. Not so much in reality, huh? Checking out my color options, guys. Mm. Got one in here called Razzmatazz. Crayola has some really cute names for some of their crayons. Really cute names. Okay. Throat starting to itch. <coughs> Excuse me, I am going to have to go to the doctor and talk to them about getting on some allergy medication. Because this is getting ridiculous. 
it's even draining a lot at night and making it hard for me to sleep. And Lord knows I have enough problems trying to sleep. I don't need any added problems. I do just fine on my own with having sleeping issues. Gary's allergies have been real bad too and his eczema is acting up really bad and he doesn't necessarily get outbreaks like breaking out when his eczema acts up what he gets is just extremely itchy in certain spots and I don't know I'm beginning to wonder if there is something going on in like the room that we're in if something's getting through these vents or something uh, that might be causing some of these issues that we're having. I mean, I don't know. It's just really strange how bad it's been. And um, I always get dry skin anyway in the winter, so I'm itchy. But I've been super itchy for a while now and you know Gary pointed out he said you know were you this itchy before we moved in here um last February and I was like mm, you know what I don't think I was so we're kind of having to question if something if it's possible that something um is in the air here that might be agitating some of these things. And if it is, we need to figure out what it is and try to fix it. You know, Gary's clothes, I try to use the free and clear detergents and things like that because of his eczema. Um, he uses fragrance free um, body washes, soaps, all of that. Um, so we do all we can do to help in any way we can. Um, but something's going on. We've had more, we've definitely been sick more since we did move in. And generally, I'm quicker to like catch on to things like that than he is. But this time, he was the one that brought it up first. And he's, I think he's right. I don't know how close this red's going to be to that same red. I hope it's not too close. I hope we'll definitely get some standout in these two colors. Um, one was just red and one's brick red. But I was definitely hoping we would get some, a difference. Well, we'll see. I have so much color tube that I need to catch up on. And someone had asked what color tube was. And if any of you happen to not know, that's just kind of what something that those of us here um, call YouTube, you know, because we're colorists. So we just make it color tube, you know, is what we'll call it. So, I mean, that's, that's all it is. It's not anything special that's going on. Um, it's just right, old, right here at YouTube. Or at least if there's a secret club, nobody's told me about it. And I think, you know, yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, goodness.
you know, I'm just trying to get as much as the image colored as I possibly can. But like I said, you can go back over once you've blended things out and just keep adding, you know, and blending, adding and blending to kind of build up color um, and things like that. Because when you're coloring with crayons, if you start trying to layer crayon on top of crayon, you get that real, that waxy build up really, really fast. Um, so kind of the way to combat that would be to use like odorless mineral spirits or something like that. Get it blended out and then come back in and put something on top of it. That way you can get your shadows and your highlights and, you know, all of those kind of things where you want them to be. Um, I'm not, you know, good with that kind of stuff, so it don't make a tootin' to me if they're there or not. But, you know, to me, straight coloring is the most enjoyable. Um, I will sit down and blend and all that kind of stuff and try to work on shading a little bit and you know I'm trying to figure out all of that um but you know if I never get it figured out I'm good I'm good with that but um but yeah yeah because I got these roses right here that need to be red too that I totally forgot that I had these roses that needed to be red I probably shouldn't have put that red so close and I mean, I guess I could go with different colors for the roses. They don't have to be red. There are roses out there that are not red. There's yellows and pinks. There's all kinds of colors I've seen with roses. can't believe we're at an hour already. Time just seems to fly right by. I guess I could go in and just go ahead and do this, the brick red also. I think if I were to do, if I was going to line it with brown or anything, I should probably, instead of using the brick red, I probably should have used the brown or something. I don't you know. I'm confused. Oh, and speaking of budget friendly, I finished the um, the Hannah Lynn image from the Ganji markers. I finished her up this morning. I just used very budget friendly. I think it was the A N Arts, the A E N Arts glitter gel pens, and I just went in and added those glitter gel pens to that picture and called it done. Um, I'll pull that out if I don't forget before I stop the camera and show that to you guys. It'll be in the month in pictures, but that way it'll just be a little bit of a sneak peek. It's hard to believe that that month in picture video is not that far away. I cannot believe that we are almost halfway finished with January. My goodness. It happens so quickly.
And also, if you want your colors to be deeper or darker, like I said, go over it with the odorless mineral spirits, let it completely dry, and then once it's dry, put another layer down, and that will continue to build. Um, you can continue to build the pigment on top of pigment and get rid of the wax in between. So that helps a lot when you do that. You know, as far as being able to um, blend, or not blend, but as far as being able to um, darken up colors and layer colors when you are um, using crayon. This broke. Okay. It almost felt like it was moving around a little bit. Am I shaking the camera when I do this? I hope, at least if I do, I hope it's not bad. I hope it doesn't make you guys kind of sick because you do have to press down a little bit when you use a crayon to, you know, really get the pigment down. And remember, I got part of the fence over there on the other side to work with, too. Are there any of you who do color with your crayons? Still, even though you're not, even though you're grown up. I mean, I can't be the only one that still likes to kind of lay down some crayon. I'm really enjoying seeing all of your work for those of you who have um, joined the Facebook group. I am really enjoying seeing your work, um, your finished pictures, your works in progress. I think they're awesome. I love seeing those so much. Um, if you're not there, you know, consider coming over and, and joining in. Um, if I miss commenting on your post, I am very sorry. I try so hard to make sure I comment. I do read everything. And I try so hard to make sure I'm commenting both on my, um, here on Facebook with my comments as well as on, you know, the group. But sometimes I'm extremely busy and I read these comments and I intend to go back. And I know there's sometimes I've realized that I have forgotten to go back and I feel really bad. Um, so if you've posted something, I am very sorry if you, I haven't. Um, personally replied you know and if you guys ever post anything here or um, you know tag me like here on Facebook or whatever specifically like tag me so it'll it kind of sticks out more in my um, list that way when I'm looking at it that way I know that you need me to you know respond to something And if I see that, I will definitely try to pay extremely close attention to what, you know, is going on and get back to you. But I truly, truly enjoyed seeing everybody's pictures over there.
I mean, you see what a difference blending makes? You've got all the white visible here, and it's just... And I mean, if I scrubbed it out better with like the chisel, it would go in to the paper even better than this. But it just kind of smooths it out. Okay, I don't know why, but I always picture when there's like a window or something, I always kind of picture there being a light in there. So I always want to kind of do that, like a yellow, have like a yellow glow or something coming. You know, I know some storage sheds do have power inside of them, and that's kind of what this reminds me of. It's like a storage shed. So... Then, let's see, I need something that looks kind of like a gold. Here we go. This is goldenrod. And I'll put it here. And here. Okay. Got all these crayons laying all around me now. I'm so afraid to put them back in and decide I need them. It's a lot of crayons to dig through. Okay, um, I'm looking for like a sky blue, but, and there has got to be one in here called sky blue. I mean, I could not imagine Crayola not having a sky blue. Of course, I'm not sure if this is the one that has blue people in it or not. I think you have to get the bigger, even, even bigger than the hundred set to get blue people. At least I don't think she's in this set. I would have really liked to have had blue people. There's a blue bell. There's a blue. Yeah. We may use blue bell. It's not a bad blue. I'd really prefer a true sky blue, but I'm not seeing it. Robin's egg blue. Okay. Wild blue yonder. Sky blue. <laughs> it was down in a little corner. Now watch me not like this sky blue. It's not bad. What does wild blue yonder look like? Eh, we'll use sky blue. All right, I'm going to take a short break, and I will be right back, but you guys won't miss me. Okay, I am back, and I am comfy. I have my robe on. I was just getting <laughs> really cold, so I put my nice, comfy robe on. I love this thing. It's so thick. It's so hard to find. This one goes way down past my knees, and it's very... Um, plush, and it is really difficult these days to find um, robes like that. Robes have just gotten shorter and thinner, and um, I love my thick, fluffy robe. And in perfect Donna style, there is a um, thrift store in a couple towns over. And they have really nice things there. And it's not a Goodwill. It's just an off-brand place. I don't know if they're anywhere else. But it's called Park Avenue. 
So I don't know if you guys have any of those where you live, but I will go in and walk around. Most of my clothes do come from thrift stores. Um, you would be surprised. I find clothes all the time with the tags still on them. Nice, nice things. And this robe was there and it had not been adopted and they change like tag colors every day, not every day, every week. Um, it'll be like in that particular store, instead of saying like red tags are half off the way they do it is everything is half off except for. So it'll be like everything is 50% off except for red. So this was 50% um, off and I paid like $4 for it and I'm not convinced it had ever even been worn. It didn't have tags, but I'm not convinced it had ever been worn. So like for $4, I got this robe that is long, past my knees, extremely thick, extremely plush, and I love it. So yeah, I have pulled, um, have you guys heard of Clark's shoes? I really like their, um, like their leather loafers. I love them a lot. I have pulled brand new Clark's, several pairs of brand new Clark's out of my stores for under $5. And those are like very expensive shoes. Um, so I've done that and I have found Nike. My mucklucks were 99 cents on a 99 cent boot special. Um, I have two pairs of bear traps that had absolutely no wear on the sole that I got for $3 each, I think. Um, I think it was three. So, yeah, I have found really nice leather purses, um, all kinds of things like that. And that's where my wardrobes come from. I know some people don't like the idea of pre-owned things like that. It doesn't bother me. Not in the least. Because some of these like shirts that I find, they sell at like JCPenney's and Kohl's and places like that for like $40. And I'm getting them for like $3. You know, I'll wear it with pride. And we can be out somewhere and someone can say, you know, oh, I love your shirt. Where did you get it? And I'm real quick to be like, um... Somewhere between Park Avenue Thrift, Goodwill, Salvation Army, you know. I found things brand new with their tags on from Forever 21. That was a really funny story. Last year, I was in a Goodwill and I found a... Forever 21 sweatshirt. It was really nice, pretty sweatshirt. Still had its tags on it and dropping the crayons still had its tags on it and I was debating because you know it was kind of like a cold shouldered um sweatshirt and it was open all the way down the arms so it was like a gray sweatshirt all the way opened down the arms and it looked like it was tied you know it had these the, like the the ropes going down through it um to hold the two sides together and I was I tried it on and it fit and I was debating it, debating it, debating it because I'm way over 21 <laughs> and I know that's clothing stores more for like younger crowd. So I was seriously debating it and I saw a really young girl sitting out there and I was like, excuse me. <laughs> it's like, I know this is going to be a real question. And I said, please be honest with me. And I kind of hold it up to me and I was like, am I too old to wear this? <laughs> I was like, because... I've been 21 twice in my lifetime already. So, and she was like, oh no, it looks great. So I did buy it. I've worn it, you know, maybe twice, once or twice. But 
Um, I bought it in the summertime. So, and generally that's how I get the best deals is I buy my winter clothes in the summer and my summer clothes in the winter. And then I just hope and pray that my weight doesn't change because my weight tends to fluctuate a lot. Um, so I just kind of have to hope. But that's how I get some of my best deals. I bought all my boots in the winter or in the summer. I've found really nice jackets too in the summertime and bought them for the winter. Okay, we got our sky done. Kidoki, we are rocking right along. I don't know what color I dropped. Oh, it was the yellow. Let me know if I get it. Ah, oh, bending over hurts. And it was the non mellow yellow. <laughs> non mellow yellow. It's cute. Here and do our grass, make our grass green. Trying to watch for the top of the little fence here, not make it green. Of course, I'm going to make the leaves green to the rosa shade of green for that. I know I'm shaking that camera. I am so sorry. I felt the desk shaking that time. Okay. And then this is other foliage here from this plant. So that needs to be a different kind of green. So many different greens in this picture. That needs to be bright on right there in this part of the part of that. And then I'm going to come on down here and I'm going to go ahead and um, make these little pieces of grass. Go ahead and get them. All right. I'm not rubbing these. I'm just kind of dabbing it to try to break up the oil or the wax some because it's going to spread. So if I do this, it's going to make everything right here green. So I'll just try to dab it a little into this grass.
And these are very tight areas to try to get into with crayons, so I know I'm having a little bit of bleed over into other things, but you just gotta minimize it the best you can. Okay, now I need my darker green. This is asparagus. some areas of grass I missed. Try to go back and hit them in just a minute. Preferably before I forget which green I used. Sorry for being so quiet. It's really hard to use such large points in smaller areas. And for me, it takes a lot of concentration. There's that green. There it is. I'm going to go ahead and do this grass so I can just kind of go ahead and go over it all while I'm at it. Okay. And you do have to be careful when you're going over things with your mineral spirits because if you go outside the lines, while you're putting the mineral spirits down, it will push the um, pigment outside of that line also. So you do have to try you do have to try to be cautious about that. Okay. Goody, goody, goody. 
goody, goody, goody. Just trying to take it little bits and pieces at a time. I don't know how long we'll keep this video going, but we'll see. I'm starting to get super quiet, and generally, when I notice that I'm starting to get super quiet, is when I start trying to wrap it up. I don't want you guys to just have to sit there and, you know, when I'm not talking. And it sounds like all kinds of things is going on outside in the kitchen. I'm sorry about that. If you guys can hear all that. I just kind of wanted to see if I could give this a two-toned kind of effect to this green. I really have no idea how this is going to blend out. This was just an idea. I know we're well over an hour now, so I'm just kind of trying to push this along just a little. hands want to stick on the plastic on my desk. Not sure how I feel about that. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? I'm not prepared to say I dislike it. I probably shouldn't be taking this right on top. It's not working real well anyway. It's just eating away at it, breaking up the, the wax. I'm going to have to wait until that dries some. Um, I have a hard time remembering when I zoom in that I have to kind of move things around for you guys to be able to still see well. Yeah, I really should not have taken that across that mental spirits, it definitely blunted, um, really blunted the, the tip of this crayon. I knew that was a bad idea. I'd already warned you guys about it. What did I do? What did I do? I did exactly what I told you guys not to do. I'm going to drop that crayon too. But at least you guys got to kind of see why not to do that. You know, when I was growing up, my dad used to always tell me that he beat everything, that I'd beat everything he had ever seen, that I could give the best advice and I could solve anybody's problems. But... I couldn't take my own advice and apply it to my own life. 
<laughs> so apparently, I am still that way. I'll go ahead and tell you guys now, I probably will not have a video up for a couple days. Um, and that breaks my heart <laughs> because I really want to. But I don't have any videos stored up. And Gary will be off tomorrow. And the day after... I will be spending some time with him. He's got some um, doctor's appointments starting to come up and things that I'm going to need to attend. And so I won't be able to just stay home and film um, because I'm going to need to be with him for these appointments that are coming up. So I will film when I can, I promise, and get another video up as soon as possible. Um, it might just be like a short color and chat maybe just to say, hey, how's it going? But definitely nothing too fancy right now as we're closing in on these appointments that are gonna be coming up. I know you guys understand, so, but I just wanted to give you a heads up because I've been, lately I've been pretty good about having a video up every day, and that is my ultimate goal, but sometimes things just kind of happen. I enjoy getting to chit chat with you guys every day. Had a nice long conversation with my son Michael today. You know, they're pretty busy and we don't get to chit chat a lot. Um, so I enjoy when I do get to have those long conversations. See, I death grip my crayons, too. I'm surprised I haven't snapped one yet. I used to be bad about snapping them, even when I was a kid. Somehow, I've got to teach myself to loosen up this death grip that I have on things when I color. And, you know, I can just kind of just get the pigment down since I'm going to blend it out anyway. I'm starting to go a little faster because this video is getting pretty long.
Hmm. Okay. I got a good bit of um, pigment onto the pen, onto the nib. Let me go ahead and do these, excuse me, roses. Make sure we're in frame. Pigment down on them. Some of the leaves I missed. I am always, always missing stuff. I'm having to go back. Drives me crazy. Babies out a little bit. Get rid of some of that marks and the wax. Hey, my back's starting to get tired. I bet you guys can tell. Oh, we're approaching two hours. Oh my goodness. There's no way we've been on this page that long. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. That makes me feel horrible. I really didn't mean to tie you guys up so long with a um, crayon video. You know, I do apologize. But, I mean, I guess at the end of the day, you guys could click out whenever you want, right? It's kind of I'm like, ugh. I had no idea we had been here that long. No idea. No clue. Now I know why my back's feeling bad. Two hours in this um, chair is just about too much for my back to take. And I was sitting here in my mind thinking, well, you know, once I get all the color down, I could go up and I could do this and I could do that and have more pigment here. And I'm like, look at the time. My goodness gracious, this turned out to be a long video. No wonder I've ran out of things to try to talk about. <laughs> wow. Now I'm really trying to hurry. Like for sure. I don't know. 
I have no idea what color I did this wall up here where I missed um, some of the wall. I do not remember what which brown I used. It was so long ago now. Um, I've been drinking my Frappuccino. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Where'd my red go? Work with me, work with me, work with me. Okay. Um, those are like some little extra little leaves that were coming off. <coughs> okay. I'm just still kind of flabbergasted about the time. That just kind of goes to show you that I've enjoyed it myself. And I hope you guys have found this at least a little enjoyable. Maybe it's inspired some of you to, you know, take it back to the basics and just maybe enjoy the process. I could do so much more with this flower if I just slowed down and took my time. And I know at this point I probably just should. I mean, we're approaching two hours, so I figure if you're still here, you probably wouldn't mind. Okay, um, are you guys in frame? I hope so. <coughs> Excuse me. I think that's a leaf that I missed in all this mess too. Uh, I am so sorry. <coughs> that makes me feel so bad, but my throat is, <laughs> I just can't get over how bad my throat's itching. <sighs> Please excuse me. I have just, I've got to break down and make that appointment. <sighs> this is just getting ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I know these are stones, but I'm going to go ahead and do them in the brick red color. And then I'll find a, a different color to go around them. I feel like I've got way too much red going on in here, but...
Okay, we're almost done with this. I'm wondering if I should just go ahead and go down here and do these also the same way that I'm doing these. I mean, I might as well. I'm still remembering that I need to show you guys the picture from Hannah Lynn um, that we worked on yesterday with the Ganji markers or John G markers or however. So if I forget, that shows you just how short my mind really is. Last night, um, I had had laundry on. And I had totally forgotten to take it out, so I turned it back on, you know, just to like warm it up in the dryer before I took it out and tried to fold it. And I had to go do a couple little things real quick, and I asked Gary, I said, hey, you know, remind me when I get done with this that I need to get our laundry and fold it. And... I finished whatever it was I had to do, and I came in, and I sat back down, and uh, we've been watching TV for, gosh, maybe a half an hour or more. Gary looks at me, and he goes, I think I was supposed to remind you to do something. I sat there, and I sat there, and I sat there thinking about this for the longest time, and then I'm like, oh, crap, the laundry. So, I jumped up and I said something to, oh, because you know, we had just been talking earlier about how bad my memory had gotten. You know, I was telling him how bad I felt it had gotten. And I said, see, I told you I had a bad memory. And he goes, well, look at me. All I could remember is that I needed to remind you to do something. I couldn't remember what. And I said, yeah, but the sad part is, is I'm the one that told you what to tell me to remember. And when you reminded me, I couldn't even, you know, there for a while, I didn't even know what you were talking about. So, yeah. It was crazy. My mind is just, my memory has just gotten extremely short. And I really hope that's not a sign of something wrong. Um, I hope it's just a sign of you know, age. I'm starting to get some age. And I've always had, you know, that button on my rear. You know the one. When it's pressed, it's easy to remember anything. And the minute you stand up and go to do something and that button, you know, pops out, it's gone. And then you come back and you sit down and you press that little button on your rear. And all of a sudden you remember again. Yeah. I've had that problem for a very, very long time, um, many years, so that's nothing new. We are closing in on done. So, not much longer.
dropping things again. Hmm. I don't know how this is going to look. But we'll try it. I may need to darken up the bench. I didn't think about that. That might be something that needs to be done. I feel like I'm holding my crayons at really odd angles. It's kind of starting to hurt my wrist a little. I'm going to make sure you guys stay in frame. Well, it gets to a point with these crayons and you're like, I'm just done. <laughs> of course, I feel like that with like, oh my goodness, pencils. Jeez. I seem to be able to work a lot longer with markers, but. Ooh. There. <laughs> there. Oh, goodness. And I know there's little parts of leaves and things that I missed and I colored over. And I'm just not going to worry too much over that. I'm just not going to lose any sleep. And I just want to go over these red parts first because if I start going over the brown parts, all it's going to do is mix the two pigments. So I need to do those separately and then wipe off the nib real good and then go back in and do the, uh, do the, um, the ones I did in Sienna.
telling my back that it needs to just chill out. And I am about to let it rest. I hear it loud and clear. I would love to darken up that bench and do a little bit of extra work to some of the, you know, like to the building. And I mean, I would, I'd like to do all that, but I don't know that my back will tolerate it right now. <sighs> Go in and get that sienna. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm just absolutely exhausted right now. I'm afraid almost anything else that I do at this point may make it worse and not better because my back's hurting just so bad. I know I've definitely reached the point where if I were coloring, you know, just on my own, I would have put it up and walked away. You know, you do hit the point where if you keep going, your lab will just mess something up. And yeah, I've definitely reached that point. That darkened. You guys didn't even get to see all that bench, did you? I just kind of added a few extra lines in there just to add something. I felt like the bench looked very, you know, flat, and it did, and it still really does, but it's a little something extra. Yeah, it's kind of like a little something extra like I added, you know, like to the tree or whatever. It's just that little extra. Oh, I think my battery on my phone is almost gone. So I'm going to go ahead and close out this video. I'm going to tell you guys, um, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. 
ring my bell to be notified of all my future uploads. And until next time, guys, peace, love, happy coloring. And I will try to show you guys this handle in. And if we go dead, I'll see you in the next video. Here she is. Hope you guys can see her. There's our Hannah Lynn. She sparkles. And here's our completed picture for today. Thank you so much, guys. See you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.